What is going on, Fantasy Football Nation? Week one is in the books. This is your home for your team, your game, and your league. It's the Fantasy Football Stock Report, the week two preview edition for 2015. Chris Pearson here with you, getting you set for week two of the season coming up. A lot to look back on after week one, a wild and crazy week one. A lot happened, some injuries happened to some key guys, uh, some guys underperformed for us. Yeah, um, uh, speaking for me, I definitely had probably the worst week one that I probably have ever had in my, this is now 11, 10, 11 years of playing fantasy football. This was a stinker. This was pretty bad. I tweeted about it on my uh, Twitter handle at Fearsonator. If you guys, of course, want to follow, um, it, it was it was really bad. Thirty-seven total total points. Thirty-seven. Normally, you get that out of one good player, but that was my whole nine-man roster. Um, so yeah, definitely. Changes needed to be made to the roster. I made a lot of sweeping changes, and I know that there were a lot of articles out there that said, oh, and some of these guys, you can't panic. Well, if they're not producing for your team from the get-go, then sometimes you got to make changes, and you got to make sacrifices. And you, but you got to look at guys that really are, I want to say, more expendable. Um, now, my co-owner, Nate, he, he freaked out. He said, if it were me, i revamp the whole roster. And, and that see, that's going a little too extreme. That's going a little too crazy. You don't want to do that. Um, you know, if you're really serious about this, you don't want to do that. So uh, you give, give your stud guys you drafted more chance to succeed. So, like, with me last week, I'm not worried about C.J. Anderson's tough performance against Baltimore. That's a good defense. I'm not worried about Calvin Johnson getting only three fantasy points. You know, he's still a top option in Detroit. I'm um, not worried, you know, the Minnesota offense for now, I'm going to bench for this week. All those guys struggled against San Francisco, but apparently San Francisco's defense better than I thought. So, uh, that was a whiff. Um, so, I, I, I missed out on on that one Melvin Gordon I thought would do would do well uh, clearly he uh, the, the preseason apparently uh, him told us a lot more than we thought apparently Danny Woodhead now is the back to own in San Diego so um, just just a lot of things that affected my team and hopefully you guys did not have about a week as I did but if you did you know we're hoping to turn it around going forward I, I take it from my experience starting out 0-1 is not the end of the world even if you lose by 61, which is what I did, uh, you know, so it, it's not the end. You can find a way to turn it around. That's what the waiver wire is for, finding gems off it, taking advantage of other situations that are out there, seeing what happened from week one, and turning the season around. So that's what we're going to look forward to this week if you had a week like mine. If you're sitting at 1-0 and, and still sitting well, then... Hey, you're you're in a good spot. You're this is your jump off point, and we're just gonna try to keep steering you forward uh, for the long haul. So, um, so yeah, that, that was the big for me. The big takeaway from week one was that there were guys that we expected to produce that didn't, and a couple big injuries. The biggest one, of course, being Des Bryant in Dallas. Now there are there's been a lot of speculation uh, about Des Bryant and how long he's going to be out. There, there, some are saying it's four to eight weeks. Some are saying it's eight to twelve. Some are saying four to six. The bottom line, though, is no matter how long he's out, you're not going to have Bryant for a long period of time with this broken foot. So, or a broken bone, as foot, I should say. Well, they say broken foot anyway, but no matter what it is. So. Bottom line is you're not going to have them. So you've got to find either you either if you don't have better options, you know, at wide receiver behind Des Bryant, who you know, obviously you draft to be your number one wide receiver. If you don't have better options, that's what the wire's for. I mean, we're talking about guys getting like Terrence Williams, his backup, if he's out there. And I understand Terrence Williams is probably owned in a lot of leagues. Uh, but if he's out there, there's a possibility like someone like Kendall Wright in Tennessee, who's working well with Marcus Mariota. Um, a guy that I picked up off of waivers, Brandon Coleman of the Saints who's clearly now the number th uh, three option in, in, in Drew Brees' system. Or if Marcus Colson is out there in your league, is, is not a bad option either, especially with a good matchup this week against Tampa Bay. Um, you know, James Jones of the Packers was a big popular add-off of waivers this week, developing that rapport back with Aaron Rodgers. 
so there's a lot of guys out there that that could I, hopefully you guys picked up off off of waivers to, to cover uh, that injury. That was probably the the, the, the biggest one uh, in terms of a skill position that came from this week. Um, Probably another big one that was Andre Ellington in Arizona. Um, he will be out apparently three to four weeks with a uh, sprained knee. Um, so that means now that Chris Johnson is now the starter in Arizona. Um, and if and see, and I was a little bit surprised at that because I thought that would lead to David Johnson, the rookie out of Northern Iowa, getting more touches and opportunities. I thought that you know, and he you know he made a beautiful play last week on that throw from Carson Palmer and down the sideline all the way like 50 some yards for the touchdown. I thought that Ellington's injury would lead to David Johnson getting more opportunities and he still might get those opportunities. He still might be, you know, you know, because we know that in the past uh, with Chris Johnson that he is more of a ground and, of a kind of, you know, Rex Ryan style, of a ground and pound, you know, directional runner, not very shifty anymore. And of course him getting up there in age, he's lost that quickness and ability. So I don't expect much out of Chris Johnson this week. I expect him more of being an RB two or a flex play. Um, certainly, he you know he's you know if you don't have any better option running back, he's worth a sneaky start. But I would expect probably David Johnson to be just as much of an RB three or a flex as well because I think he's still going to get a lot of opportunity uh, in the Arizona backfield this week. So. Um, not an ideal situation, obviously, with Ellington out, but if you're hurting at running back after week one, if you're desperate, um, those are guys that I think um, that, that could uh, step up for you as well. Um, speaking of, again, guys that struggled, um, Doug Martin in Tampa Bay. I mean, the, the Tampa offense was just a complete disappointment. It was such, it was such craziness to see Marcus Mariota outplay Jameis Winston the way he did. Uh, what a sterling debut for Mariota. And and here's the thing, you know, with, with me, and I just took a stab and a shot at him. You know, I, I was mainly aiming, aiming to get two two people this week was the Rams defense and Danny Woodhead, which I got. But I took a stab at getting Marcus Mariota because you don't want to be the owner who lets somebody else on your team or, on, or in your league get Marcus Mariota and miss that opportunity. So even though I'm already carrying two quarterbacks with Breeze and Bridgewater, I, I figured why not take a stab at getting Marcus Mariota. We're seeing what he did in this first game. I know it's one game, and I know it's, it's early in the process because I read a stat on Twitter, and here's something to think about. Marcus Mariota had a perfect passer rating. That was the highest passer rating for a rookie debut since Robert Griffin III. And we all know where Robert Griffin III is right now. He's on the bench behind Kirk Cousins. So take it with a grain of salt, but I figured why not? If he continues developing a strong rapport with these receivers, you know, and yes, the defense is going to get tougher. Not every defense is like Tampa Bay's, which is terrible. But just something to, to see what happens with him going forward. So that's why I, I took a stab at Mariota. Um, and he's had another great matchup this week, by the way, against Cleveland. So, um... So yeah, but 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 with Tampa Bay, Doug Martin, I I had to let him go. I'm I just don't see it. I mean, there were flashes of it in the preseason, but if the Tampa offense is going to be that bad continually to be that bad and that terrible, I, I couldn't hold on to him. Um, and then another guy that you know I might maybe I'll regret letting go down the line, but for now, I after that week one performance, I need people that can you know put up numbers. Uh, I let go Nelson Aguilar of Philadelphia, and and I know again that one will probably, might be the one that will come back to, to, to bite me and haunt me. But you, you put up a donut in your first week, and you were only targeted like two or three times. I mean that 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 doesn't show me that you know you're, you're going to get continuous production. There are some rookies that are going to fly right out of the gate, like Amir Abdullah, who, I, who I'm so glad that I got, um, and 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 others. But there are others that are going to struggle in the early going. So. Uh, it was tough, but I, I felt like if, if you know if he's getting out targeted and out caught by the likes of Riley Cooper and Josh Huff and, and, and these guys, and Jordan Matthews is the clear number one in Philadelphia, then uh, I, I don't think you can really trust him going forward. So that might come back to bite me, but for now I'm okay with the decision. Um, so that's why I made it. All right. Enough of all that stuff. It's time to really look at the breakdown. It's time to look at um, numbers for the week. See what um, what's out there um, and, and who I like more than these others and, and for these matchups this week. Uh, really a lot to look forward to some of these matchups. Um, so 
quarterback wise, I mean, your your, your big guy, you know, your your top numbers are all the quarterbacks because they really put up a lot of points for your team. But top five: Andrew Luck, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, Carson Palmer. I, let's talk about Andrew Luck because I the Colts this this week. What a utter disappointment to start the season against the Buffalo Bills. Um, it just completely unexpected, maybe not, unex, maybe not unexpected, but at least in the sense that the Bills just controlled that game from the start. Tyrod Taylor, by the way, looked all as impressive as, as he did. He has clearly got the hold in that starting job with his abilities, getting his receivers involved. Sammy Watkins, Percy Harvin now coming along in Buffalo as well. I think he had a touchdown. Uh, and LaShawn McCoy in the backfield, clearly healthy, no issue with that hamstring. So uh, Buffalo players are going to be uh, ones to watch for the foreseeable future, but Andrew Luck, I don't know. I'm surprised he is 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 late at number one this week. I really am because yes, I understand he's going up against the Jets, and and that's on paper that seems like a good matchup. But T. Y. Hilton is questionable with that knee issue. He's day to day. He might miss some times. So even though you have guys like they like Dante Moncrief and Philip Dorsett and the two tight ends and Fleener and Allen, and you got Gore in the backfield. I I I just don't know if if that's you know without when you're missing your your main weapon potentially in in this game, it, it, it's tough. And the Jets, even though they're playing Cleveland, they look pretty sterling against Cleveland. That defense has always been strong, so I'm a little weary on, on Andrew Luck. I would I would actually I would probably put Breeze, Rogers, and yes, even Carson Palmer ahead of Andrew Luck this week. I would I would really because again better matchups. Drew Brees is going to destroy Tampa Bay. I mean, I am starting in my league this week. He is going to absolutely destroy Tampa Bay. Again, if the Tampa defense can let a rookie in Marcus Mariota with Tennessee put up four touchdowns on them in the first half, mind you, the half, the first half of that game, Mariota had four touchdowns. He didn't need to do any more for the first half because that game was already over. It was over, okay? You know, if that Tampa defense is that horrendous and, and it, out, it labels a rookie to do that, imagine what a seasoned veteran like Drew Brees in the Saints offense is going to do to poor Tampa Bay. So I would have Drew Brees ahead of Andrew Luck. I would have Aaron Rodgers ahead of Andrew Luck. Green Bay had a great opener against Chicago last week. Rodgers developing the rapport back that he had with James Jones. He's got Randall Cobb. He's got, you know, even though Devontae Adams wasn't targeted much, he's, he's coming along in that offense now. Um, that Green Bay Seattle game is going to be fun this week. That's probably going to be another offensive shootout. Um, so a lot of points going to be scored in that game probably. So I would have him above Andrew Luck, and you got to love Carson Palmer's matchup against Chicago this week because again, if you know if Green Bay can do that to Chicago, the defense was awful. Carson Palmer, again, it's great to see him healthy. It's great to see him, you know, leading this Arizona offense the way he should. You know, with those weapons and Larry Fitzgerald and John Brown uh, and Michael Floyd back healthy and and two now with with Johnson with the Johnson combination there, great to see that. I would definitely put even him above Andrew Luck. So I would rate them Breeze, Rogers, Palmer, then Andrew Luck. I expect Andrew Luck to bounce back from his opening week performance, but I don't expect him to have a big a week as the experts say that he's you know he's he's going to have. I don't. I don't, I don't really see that because, again, that Jets defense is just so strong. Plus, again, he might not have his main weapon in T.Y. Hilton. So I would rate them Breeze, Rodgers, Palmer, Luck, and then Eli. Eli, of course, had another big week uh, this week, even though the, the Giants lost that game to Dallas. But again, the controversy, the whole thing with, with the controversy surrounding the Giants, with, with Eli saying Rashad Jennings shouldn't have scored on, you know, when, you know the, the, the missed timeout thing and not counting timeouts and the clock management and, and everything like that, that, that's internal. I mean, that was just a complete and utter mess. And then Rashad Jennings came out yesterday and said, I shouldn't have thrown Eli under the bus, you know, for the whole situation, saying that in public. And, and that, that, that's just a mess. That's, but... The bottom line is, with when it comes to fantasy, Eli does have a good matchup this week. Now, it is it is a little bit of a tougher matchup now because the Atlanta. I have to reward the Atlanta defense for playing as well as they did, at least for the first half against the Eagles on Monday night. I was very impressed with the way the Falcons' defense was just shutting down every option that Sam Bradford had to throw to. Uh, they were just, you know plugging up Demarco Murray in the backfield. Now they did let Darren Sproles go crazy, but. Hey, Darren Sproles does that against anybody. So, 
Um, but you know, so it's a little bit tougher than than it normally would have been. But I still think Eli's going to do well this week. So I would have him on the bottom of that bunch. But I really like those top three options: Breeze, Rogers, Palmer. Yes, must starts. Get them in your lineup. Uh, next five: Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, Colin Kaepernick, and then Tony Romo. Again, another good matchup you could take advantage of. Joe Flacco, is, again, normally is not among you know those strong options, but he couldn't ask for a better matchup this week. Again, this is probably the matchup of the week because anybody you have going up against Oakland, now you're going to want to start in the foreseeable future because the Raiders just looked absolutely terrible against Cincinnati. Um, you know, Andy Dalton and company carved them up. Um, it, it, you know, David Carr banged his hand, but it looks like he's going to play this week. So at least that's positive for Oakland fans uh, that, that they're not going to have to suffer through Matt McGloin at quarterback. Um, but I anyone you have on Baltimore, you're going to want to start against Oakland this week. So you're going to want to start Joe Flacco if you don't if you don't have a better option at quarterback. Um, Justin Forsett, obviously, if he's healthy, he's a RB one this week. Uh, Steve Smith, um, you know, a anybody, um, maybe not, you know, maybe not the tight end, but because uh, they're really, you know, hit or miss. They're young guys like Max Williams, Crockett Gilmore. Uh, but any of the main elite options there in Baltimore, uh, you're going to want to start this week uh, because the matchup is just too juicy. I might even, it might be a little bit crazy, but I might even consider if you're torn between Joe Flacco and Andrew Luck, I might even consider playing Flacco over Luck because again, the matchup is just too, too juicy here to, to pass up on. So that's another one that I could probably see moving up the roster. I, I like any, like I said, I like anybody in the Seattle Green Bay game this week. So yes, Russell Wilson, get him in your lineup if if you don't have better options. I, I think he's going to have another great week this week. I, I again, I that. That's going to be like, what, a primetime game? So you want to get your Seattle and Green Bay guys in there. That's going to be a fun matchup. Um, so now the next three on this list, this these three concern me a little bit. Ben Roethlisberger, Colin Kaepernick, Tony Romo. Um, obviously, I'm a little worried about Big Ben because, again, the San Francisco defense played so strong in the opener against Minnesota that, you know, that's that's a little bit uh, c concerning. Um I would – oh, boy. It's a tough call between those three. I would – and see, the thing of it is, I know I've been dogging Kaepernick, but he looked so good against Minnesota. You know, it's it's tricky. And Pittsburgh's defense didn't all look all that great against New England. I would – I would probably say to put – I would flip-flop those around. I would, I would obviously keep Flacco and Wilson where they are. I might move Flacco up to a top-five quarterback this week based on the matchup. Uh, I would probably put Kaepernick and Romo ahead of Roethlisberger. I really would. I, because I, again, with that matchup being so tough, I, I would lean toward using Kaepernick over, and, and and even though Tony Romo won't have Des Bryant for the foreseeable future, I you know Tony Romo has not had, you know he's been Bryant's been out in the past, and and Romo's done well with the guys that are there like Terrence Williams and Cole Beasley and Jason Witten getting these guys involved. He's 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 been able to make do with what he has, so that's why I respect Romo a little bit more than um, than other people might think. So I would I would rate out of that group I would go Flacco, Wilson, Kaepernick, then Romo, and then Big Ben because again the matchup even though even though Big Ben still gonna have plenty of opportunities to throw to guys like Antonio Brown and Heath Miller. Um, you know, Marcus Wheaton is still suspended or or no, Martavis Bryant's one suspended. Sorry, Marcus Wheaton is, is still there. Um, but it just worries me now the way that San Francisco looked in week one with that defense. So a little weary on him, but I, I would say certainly he's still worth using, but temporary expectations a little bit on him. I would say more of a QB two, um, very much borderline between a one and two, but I would say I'd be fine using Kaepernick or Romo ahead uh, of, of Big Ben this week. Uh, next five, Cam Newton, Matt Ryan, Andy Dalton, Nick Foles, Tyrod Taylor. Um, Cam Newton's got a great matchup this week. Um, but again, the, the concern you have there is even though Houston obviously looked really, really bad against Kansas City last week um, and Alex was able to do damage against him, you know, Cam Newton – 
the fact of the matter is he still doesn't have, you know, a, a great receiving core. His main option is Greg Olson, and that's pretty much it. Now, he did get Jericho Cotter involved last week, which was nice. Cotter got a touchdown, and someone, you know, picked him up in my league that I was facing against, and Cotter got 10 fantasy points. So that really – that was nice to see. But uh, um, but other, you know, but otherwise, you know, again, Newton's ability to run is always strong. Um He's trying to get his receivers a better rapport with those guys. So, um, but but just based on that alone, I again I would probably put Matt Ryan and Andy Dalton ahead of Cam Newton. I, I would here because Ryan looked very impressive in the opener against Philadelphia. The Giants really didn't do anything on defense to slow Dallas down. So I like that matchup for Matt Ryan and, and Julio Jones is always is the monster that he is as always. So. Uh, I love Matt Ryan again this week. I love Julio Jones again this week. So, um, you know, the, the running situation there in Atlanta is just not selling itself out right now. It's clearly going to be a committee. Uh, Tevin Coleman nor Devontae Freeman did nothing to separate one from the other. So, uh, clearly, I, I think it, for now it's going to be the passing show with, with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and Roddy White. Good to see him healthy again uh, and, and his, uh, you know, and his area of weapons there. So, I would put Matt Ryan above Cam Newton this week. I would put Andy Dalton above him this week because San Diego's secondary, even though you got Eric Weddle in that secondary, they didn't really do they didn't really do anything to slow down Detroit either. So, um, I I I think I think I would have it I would have it Ryan and Dalton Ryan far and away above Cam Newton. Now Dalton maybe barely above uh, Cam Newton. If you're torn between Newton and Dalton. It's more of a coin flip, I would say, but I would barely put Dalton above Cam Newton. Nick Foles and Tyrod Taylor, I'm not thrilled with either this week. Now, even though Nick Foles does have a good matchup here going up against Washington, Washington actually really held its own against Miami last week. Tannehill didn't blow up like I expected him to, and and I and I think I was the only one that thought that Miami's offense was going to be absolutely buku against Washington last week, but... Their defense actually didn't do too bad. They really, most for the most part, held them in check. So even though St. Louis's offense looked very impressive in the win over Seattle, which was the big, stunning upset result of Week One, um, you know, I, I can't say I'm too too thrilled. And Tyrod Taylor looked, of course, very impressive against the Colts. I'm not going to lie, but now he's going up against New England, tougher matchup. Even though it's at home. Um, I'm a little bit leery there. Um, if you wanted to roll the dice on one, I would say probably go more so Taylor than Foles, just because of the fact that 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 Taylor did look very impressive in in the week. And I think he's got a lot more weapons to work with there than I think than Foles does in St. Louis. With St. Louis, Brian Quick is still hurt. You, now you've got Tavon Austin there making plays. The running back situation is still a mess. You know, is is Todd Gurley or Trey Mason going to come back this week? We don't know. A lot of people have banked into Benny Cunningham. Now that situation might get messed up. So it, it's 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 just kind of a mm, leery situation. So I would probably put I would put Taylor ahead of Foles. I'm not thrilled with Nick Foles this week. I even though the matchup's good on pay again on paper. The fact that Washington's defense looked shut down Miami last week, and the fact that really there isn't a whole lot there to work with. I'm just not, you know, fully sold on that this week. So I prefer Taylor. I would prefer Marcus Mariota to Nick Foles. I would. He's the next guy on this list. And I would I would probably put Mariota ahead of both Foles and Taylor because, again, of this great match this week. Cleveland, the only Cleveland, you know, Joe Hayden did not look like a shutdown corner last week. He didn't. He, he clearly was exploited. Cleveland's defense just looked awful against the Jets. And, and again, if, if Marcus Mariota can put up four touchdowns in the first half against Tampa Bay and their bad defense, imagine what he's going to do to Cleveland's bad defense. So, it, so again, if, if you're in a situation where you are not thrilled with your starting quarterback and you went out and got Marcus Mariota, it may not hurt this week to take a, take a chance and start him against this terrible Cleveland defense. So I would definitely put Mariota ahead of Foles and Taylor. Not so much uh, Dalton and Matt Ryan. But um, but definitely ahead of of Nick Foles and Tyrod Taylor. Um, Sam, I would I would probably put Sam Bradford ahead of of Foles and, and Taylor. Um, 
he, he's the, the next five on this list are just to give you a, a, a context are Mariota, Sam Bradford, Ryan Tannehill, Jameis Winston, and Matthew Stafford. Um, I would definitely put Mariota ahead of Foles and Taylor. I would put Sam Bradford ahead of Foles and Taylor because, again, Dallas' is secondary banged up. No Orlando Skandrick for the year. Good to see Bradford healthy. Clearly developing a rapport with Jordan Matthews. Um, so I, I, I like him in that matchup. I I, I, I have, again, you know, the, it's just as long as he stays healthy, he's good. He runs that Eagles offense very well. He was starting to do the comeback in the second half against Atlanta. Didn't quite get there all the way, but he's got weapons there in Matthews and Darren Sproles. Um, you know, Ertz at the tight end position. So a lot of weapons there, a lot of receivers to throw to. So I think that match was just primed for him to do well. I, I have those two definitely ahead of Foles and Taylor. Now, obviously, you have to be concerned with Ryan Tannehill because he did not break out in the way that we thought he would against Washington last week. Um, and, and again, this is a prime matchup at Jacksonville. But really, Jacksonville didn't do a, a bad job against Carolina. They really didn't, uh, you know, Newton didn't have a breakout week as, as many would have thought that it was only a 20 to 9 score, held Carolina to 20 points. So Tannehill worries me a little bit. I, I really can't put him any higher than what he is now. I, I agree with those bottom three. I. Yeah. Obviously, after week one, I'm not thrilled with Jameis Winston I, I, after that performance. The key for Jameis Winston is going to be getting Mike Evans back healthy. If, if he gets him back healthy, then maybe he'll start to get going and play better. And at least got Austin Severian Jenkins, the tight end involved, had, had a couple touchdowns. So that was huge. Um, so, so again, and now going up against the Saints, again, the Saints secondary is nothing to write home about. It looked pretty bad against Arizona. But... I really can't put a whole lot of stock in Winston right now because of the fact that from what we saw in week one, it was pretty bad. So, um, And Stafford. Stafford is pretty much low on the list just because of the fact that he has struggled against Minnesota in the past. Now, Detroit exactly did not look really great. You know, I think that's an anomaly. You're not gonna, you cannot target Calvin Johnson only a few times and, and be successful. That's just – no. He, he's your elite – Receiver for a reason. So, but Minnesota's defense has has shown to be you know tough in the past. But I can understand why he's down this low on the list. I there are better options out there than Matthew Stafford. If you don't have a better option, obviously then you'll have to start Matthew Stafford. But um, I, I agree where he's at there. Um, maybe I'd put him ahead of Winston. Not so much Tanny Hill, but I, I'd probably flip flop him and Winston. But I can understand why he's listed so low here. Next five on this list, Teddy Bridgewater, Jay Cutler, Peyton Manning, Alex Smith, Johnny Manziel. I have put out on Twitter um, that if this video does not get uploaded by the time before Thursday Night Football starts, which could be a possibility considering the long process of uploading my videos, that I have posted the must-start guys for the Thursday Night Football game tonight between Denver and Kansas City. Um... Denver for Denver, I think it's C.J. Anderson, if he, as long as he's healthy, uh, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. Those are your three for Denver that you must start. How has We finally has reached this point that Peyton Manning is no longer a must-start option. I, it's finally reached that point. But he looked absolutely horrible against Baltimore last week. Now you can, now you can say that the Baltimore defense did a good job, which I can understand that. They are a good defensive unit. Or you could just say that, you know, Peyton Manning's it, – his passes are off. They, they clearly are. And and so there are clearly better options out there this week than Peyton Manning. So he's not a must-start anymore. He's more of – in Kansas City's defense, which looked actually pretty strong against Houston, and that defense is very tough. This is – to me, tonight, this Denver-Kansas City game is going to be a defensive slugfest. There's not going to be a lot of points scored here, I don't think, unless – your guy, unless the running back score points, which that's why C.J. Anderson and Jamal Charles to me are must starts, and maybe Travis Kelsey finds the ends under once in a while. But other than that, there's not a lot of guys relevant for fantasy purposes for this game tonight. So that's why I'm not comfortable starting Peyton Manning in a league. I'm not comfortable starting Alex Smith. You know, Alex Smith to me is more of a QB two or three. Jeremy Macklin is more of a QB three or wide receiver three or four. Uh, so I, I really can't see you using either of those guys. Um, 
to, to me, the, the best quarterback out of that bunch, again, and, and I agree with this, might just be Teddy Bridgewater, but again, I'm, I'm leery on the Minnesota offense right now because of how bad they looked against San Francisco. So out of that group of five, if, if you're pressed in the starting one, you, you obviously, you know, if you're if you have no better options at quarterback, you might instead of starting Peyton by default. Um, but out of that bunch, really, there's really no, you know, must start starting option this week out of this bunch. You know, Bridgewater is more of a, a QB two. Color is, again, more of a, you know, but again, going up against that Arizona defense, more of a QB2, QB3. I'm not touching Alex Smith. He's more of a QB3. And I'm definitely not starting Johnny Manziel against Tennessee because there's not a whole lot of weapons there. The Tennessee defense showed us pretty stout against Tampa Bay. And, and you know, he just hasn't really shown himself yet to be a, you know, elite or even not even a lead, and not even a must-start option at quarterback yet. So none of those options are pretty. Hopefully, you're not digging deep that far into quarterbacks. But uh, if any one of those, I, I would rate those five. Here's how I'd rate. I'd rate them: Manning just by default, then Bridgewater, Cutler, Smith, Manziel. Or actually, I'd probably flip flop Manziel and Smith because I don't like Alex Smith this week at all. So that that's how I, I would rate um, those guys. Okay, next five here on the list, um, and this is, by the way, this is all positions. This is just quarterbacks. This is all positions. This is how we're, we're doing it now, a little differently, just going on all positions. Um, Tom Brady, Phillip Rivers, Antonio Brown, Marshawn Lynch, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, out of that group, obviously, I would say Marshawn Lynch is obviously, again, start your Seahawks, start your Packers. Anyone in that group you're starting, for the guys that you rely on, your, your skill positions, um, I don't know, maybe about the Packers tight end, maybe not as much, but I think it's like what, like Richard Rodgers or something like that. But you're you're not, you know, you might not want to start him. Um, but any, any anyone else, yeah, start Jimmy Graham. Uh, obviously, he's a must start at any time. So anyone else that you normally rely on for the Seahawks and the Packers, start them this week in that matchup. Um, yes, Tom Brady. Even though, see, and the reason Brady's on the list is because it's Buffalo. And Buffalo's defense did look very strong against the Colts. If, 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 Buffalo, if Buffalo can shut down Andrew Luck, then that's why you got to be a little bit leery about Tom Brady. But you probably have no better options outside of Tom Brady. So I, I, I still think Brady is definitely startable and usable. But, again, you'll want to temper expectations because this matchup just got a lot tougher than it might have been a couple weeks ago. So, so I would say, again, Lynch is a must start for sure. Um, I'd say Phillip Rivers, maybe not a must-start for sure, because Cincinnati's secondary is is tricky. Um, Antonio Brown is a must-start regardless of matchup, even though I think Big Ben's going to struggle a little bit. I, I still think he's going to get his share of targets, so he's a must-start regardless. Um, but see, the next one on that list then is, is Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I can't recommend starting Fitzpatrick over a Tom Brady or a Phillip Rivers. Well... Maybe Rivers, maybe. It's a coin flip. I mean, Tom Brady is definitely, I said, usable against Buffalo, but just, I would say, more borderline one slash two. I, I would say because, again, of the tough matchup, but you probably can't afford to sit Tom Brady. Now, between Phillip Rivers and Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick looked really, really great against Cleveland. That's a given. And the Colts looked really, really bad against Buffalo. That's a given. So... Again, this this presents to be a really, really good matchup for Ryan Fitzpatrick this week going up against the Colts. Even though it's at Indy, this still looks like a really good matchup on paper because the Colts' defense sucked. It really, really sucked last week. So, And and, and even though San Diego is a great offense there with Phillip Rivers, this Cincinnati defense in the past has shown to be very, very strong. So, And it's at Cincinnati, and the Bengals tend to play better at home. So... This to me is a real coin flip. This is a real dilemma to me. If, if I'm, and I don't know if this is a scenario in a lot of leagues, but if I'm torn between Philip Rivers and Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm leaning toward, I, I hate to say this, I never thought I'd say this, I'm leaning toward Ryan Fitzpatrick because the, the matchup again is so much better. So it, it's very, very close, but I, I would take a shot in the dark as a very deep sleeper as a borderline QB one or two and lean on Ryan Fitzpatrick here because this is a very juicy matchup. So 
Uh, so out of that group, I would say Brown and Lynch are must starts. Brady's usable, but not a must start because of the tough matchup. Fitzpatrick is a deep, is a definite sleeper starter at QB one or two, and then I would say Rivers is is the least likely out of that group because I say more of a QB two because the matchup is so tough. So that's what's looking at me out of that group. Next five here. Odell Beckham, Matt McGloin, Jamal Charles, Matt Forte, Jeremy Hill. Sorry, again, I hate to turn this off. I always forget to turn that down before the show. Um, but out of that group, I'd say four of the five are must-starts. That's Odell Beckham, Jamal Charles tonight, Matt Forte, Jeremy Hill. Those four are given. They put up big numbers every single week. Those are reliable guys. Regardless of matchup, you start those guys. You're not starting Matt McGloin of Oakland against Baltimore. You're just you're not. If he if he plays, if Derek, if David Carr doesn't go, and if, if Matt McGloin plays, you're not starting. In fact, I'm just gonna say you're not starting any Oakland Raider against Baltimore. I understand the Ravens lost Terrell Suggs in defense. I understand that, but they still looked well enough last week to completely discombobulate the Denver offense. So it was non-existent. So you're not starting any Oakland Raiders. Against against no, you're 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 just not doing it. So I don't care if you have Latavius Murray. I don't care if you have Amari Cooper. Put them on your bench. You're you're, you're not starting those guys against Baltimore. Just you're you're, just, you're not doing it. Next five: Eddie Lacy, Blake Bortles, Julio Jones, Carlos Hyde, Benny Cunningham. Obviously, Lacy and Jones are the class of that group. You're starting these guys this week. You're usually starting him on on any week, you know, regardless of matchup. But Again, I mentioned Packers Seahawks going to be a buku fest, so you're starting those guys regardless. And after Julio Jones' impressive week one, again, my opponent last week had Julio Jones, and I had to watch his points and, and Matt Ryan to make matters worse. So I had to watch his points go up and up and up and up and up. My points do absolutely nothing. Stuck, stuck there on 20-some, 30-some, like, uh, catch a pass, Nelson Aguilar, but that didn't happen. So, so Julio Jones, yes, elite option. Start him. Best out of that group. Um, Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde, really good week one against Minnesota. He clearly showed that he can lead the backfield in San Francisco. And, and now that Reggie Bush might be out for a few weeks with the calf string. Oh, my gosh, Reggie Bush injured. What a shocker. I know, right? Oh! Yeah, no. Um, Carlos Hyde. I will say borderline RB1 this week going up against Pittsburgh. I I will I think he's a very good starting option. As for the other two guys in that group, Blake Bortles, Benny Cunningham, don't I again, no, you're not starting Blake Bortles against that tough Dolphins defense. It just doesn't happen. And and again, the Rams, the running back situation. A lot of you guys, I bet, picked up Benny Cunningham off waivers because you were hurting at running back. Because you're thinking, okay, Trey Mason's not going to be back for a while. Todd Gurley's still recovering from the knee injury, not going to be back for a while. So Benny Cunningham's going to be the guy to, to, to lead the backfield there. But, but, but now we're hearing reports that, oh, Mason might come back this week and Gurley's practicing. So what, what do we make of the muddy, metal mess that is the Rams' backfield? You know what that means? That means you avoid it. You don't even touch it with a 38 and a half foot pole. It, it, it doesn't happen. You know, fire, fire, run away. You don't do because then you don't know who's going to start. So until something clear cut develops from that backfield, I do not trust Benny Cunningham. I would not play him this week again, even though the good matchup with Washington on paper, I wouldn't trust that this week. Next five, DeMarco Murray, Kurt Cousins, Chris Ivory, Mike Evans, Amir Abdullah. I'm starting Amir Abdullah in my league this week. I I don't even know why I sat him in the opening week. I, I don't know why I started Melvin Gordon over him. I I, I, I didn't think, you know, because, again, Joy Bell was healthy. He was activated off the pup list. I thought, okay, he's going to take all the targets away from Abdullah. That kind of worried me a little bit. But clearly there's no worry. Clearly the, his role is going to be big in the Detroit backfield. So I'm surprised he's that low on this list. I'd put him up there with DeMarco Murray. I I would I, I might even lean putting him above DeMarco Murray. That's that's how confident I am now in, in Abdullah's role in that backfield. So I would say Abdullah is a must start this week. Obviously DeMarco Murray is a must start this week. He's impressive in the opener. Um, now going up against his former team, you know DeMarco Murray's gonna have a big game because he's going up against his former team. So you know that's that's a big advantage. Um, Chris Ivory. 
start your Jets. I mean, Chris Ivory's got another big week this week. He just completely carved up Cleveland. And I, and I saw Chris Ivory. I can't. I couldn't believe this. I saw Chris Ivory on a lot of fantasy benches in matchups for week one. Are you kidding me? We wouldn't start that against Cleveland? Really? Well, then, you're, well, then you better be getting him in your lineup now going against the Colts because you know the Colts' run defense sucks and it can't do anything. It let LaShawn McCoy go buku on them. You, you have to get – in fact, if you're looking at – if you have – you know, if you, have, if you have three running backs, okay, let's say you have three running backs, and you have DeMarco Murray as your one, Amir Abdullah in your, as your two, and Chris Ivory as a shot in the dart number three, you're loaded at running back, okay? If you've got those three on your roster as running backs, you are set. You are set for the foreseeable future. So that that's a, a big dilemma. But any one of those guys is worth starting this week, any one of them. Um, the only concern about Mike Evans for Tampa Bay is if he's healthy. If he plays, then I think he is at least a solid wide receiver too. Um, but if not, again, more targets for Vincent Jackson and Austin Sperry and Jenkins at tight end. Kirk Cousins against the Rams, no. I, no. Just, I mean, yes, the Rams defense did not look great against Seattle, but that was Seattle. This is Washington. Completely different offenses, totally different story. The Rams defense, the DST is going to have a big week again this week. It's why I got him back. No, I don't like Kirk Cousins. Next five on the list, Randall Cobb, Lamar Miller, A.J. Green, C.J. Anderson, Tevin Coleman. Randall Cobb is a must start again. Again, Packers, Seahawks start those guys. Um, A.J. Green, I, I'd probably put A.J. Green second out of that list because, again, Andy Dalton you know, is going to, you know, even though Eric Weddle will probably be on A.J. Green a lot, I still think Dalton's going to find ways to get him the ball. A.J. Green's just a ridiculous receiver, so, you know, I, I think he's going to be strong there. So get him in. C.J. Anderson, again, as long as he is healthy tonight, if he plays, Denver cannot ignore giving the ball to C.J. Anderson, okay? They can't. You know, forget about this Ronnie Hillman talk. Forget about Ronnie who. For, forget about, you know, that, you know, oh, we're, we were going to give him carries. You know, we're going to get on the backfield. Stop that, okay? St drop that right now. <laughs> drop that now. R Ronnie Hillman is not relevant right now. He's not important. Off, off screen. Ronnie Hillman, you are over here. You are not part of this right now. You are over here. CJ is here. He is the guy. Get off the screen. You are not part of the discussion. Back you. Back you, Ronnie Hillman. No. Stay away. No. Get out of here. No. No. Don't. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't make me stick somebody on you. He is not part of the discussion. CJ Anderson is the lead back. As long as he is healthy, he will play. He, in all likelihood, he's, yes, he's listed as questionable, but all reports are indicating he's going to play tonight. So I'm starting him in my league um, without hesitation. And, and I have him as, as a solid RB one or two out of this group. Um... Again, concerned about Lamar Miller and Tevin Coleman because, again, the Atlanta running back situation, even though the matchup against the Giants is good, you don't know who's going to come out of that group in Atlanta. I'm surprised he's projected for as many points as he is. So, not thrilled with Tevin Coleman, more of an RB3 or a flex. Lamar Miller, even though the matchup is great against Jacksonville, you have to, again, you're worried about that Dolphins offense the way they looked last week. So, to me, more of an RB2 or 3. Uh, next five... Melvin Gordon, Adrian Peterson, Mark Ingram, Latavius Murray, Brandon Cooks. Adrian Peterson is going to bounce back, okay? He's not going to have bad weeks like he did against San Francisco every single week. He's going to bounce back. It was his first game back in a long time. Don't don't panic about Adrian Peterson. Don't panic about Charles Johnson either. I still have him on my roster on my bench. I didn't drop him. Don't drop Teddy Bridgewater. The Vikings eventually are going to bounce back. They're not going to have bad weeks like this every single week. North Turner's still there as offense coordinator. He's going to get the job done. So I wouldn't panic on those guys yet. Adrian Peterson's going to have a big week, I think, again this week. Even though the Detroit defense is still strong, this is a matchup that I think, again, is, is you know maybe could produce you know it's going to produce a lot of points or it's going to be a, a defensive knockdown drag out thing. But I think Peterson's going to bounce back. I like him more than I like Melvin Gordon this week. I like I like Mark Ingram against Tampa Bay more than I like. I'm su again, I am surprised that Melvin Gordon is still being projected as high as he is when it comes to running backs. He's done nothing yet to validate that this this lofty position. 
He's done nothing. He's done nothing to validate yet. The matchup with Cincinnati is tough this week, and he keeps getting vultured by Danny Woodhead, who had two touchdowns, oh, by the way, last week, not through the air, on the ground, on the ground. The San Diego Chargers are vulturing their top draft pick and using Danny Woodhead as a runner. That does not happen. That has never happened in the Chargers system. You didn't, you know, when it, whenever Danny Wood had always scored, it was out of the air. It was coming off the, you know, it was, it was running a route out of the backfield. Well, here, I'll madden this for you, okay? All right, so here, okay, maybe I can do it with a finger. So here, here's Phillip Rivers. Below him is Danny Woodhead in the backfield. Here's the, the guys on the line, and then here's the other guys on the line. Okay, okay, so here's, here's guys on line. Here's, here's XXX. Here's Danny, okay? So Phillips has the ball. Danny's doing one of these. He's going, whoop, he's going like this on the side, or he's going to the other side, or he's hesitating at first and then going out, or he's in the, or I don't know if you ever used him in the slot, but he's in the slot here and he's going straight at the field. Danny Wood had never stayed in the backfield as a runner. He would always run a, you know, an out route, and that's how he got his touchdowns. But if the Chargers aren't even going to invest in their first round draft pick, in Melvin Gordon, and they're going to have Danny Woodhead run the ball in. That's got to concern Melvin Gordon. It's going to concern me, and that's why I picked Woodhead up off of waivers because, you know, if he's going to be the more elite back of the two, then, you know, I, I'm still kind of trying to take a wait-and-see approach, but I'm not plugging Melvin Gordon in my lineup right now until I actually see something relevant out of him. So, I'm surprised he's that high. I have Adrian Peterson ahead of him. I have Mark Ingram ahead of him. Maybe not so much Latavius Murray. And I can't put I can't put Latavius Murray of Oakland ahead of Melvin Gordon now. No. But I don't trust either of them. So Peterson must start. Ingram must start. Brandon Cooks, yes. Any Saint that you rely on is a must start. Brandon Coleman is a must start wide receiver three. I, I'm just going to say because, again, Tampa's defense is terrible. Start your Saints this week. So, Peterson, Ingram, Cooks, yes. Gordon and Murray, no. Um, Rashad Jennings, Demarius Thomas, TJ Yeldon, Terrence Williams, Rob Gronkowski. I'd say out of that bunch, I'd say three of the five are must-starts. That's Demarius Thomas. Again, if he's healthy, play him. Terrence Williams will be the number one receiver now, replacing Des Bryant. So, yes, play him. And, of course, you don't sit Gronk regardless of matchup. So, you play Rob Gronkowski regardless. Rashad Jennings and TJ Yeldon, I'm not thrilled about either. Because um, you know that Rashad Jennings now, there might be some repercussions from the comment that he made toward Eli. I don't know if the, you know if Tom Cobble's going to let that slide or not. I don't know. Um, but again, going up against that Atlanta defense, which looked strong against Philly. Um, so uh, that concerns me. To me, more of an RB2-3 or a flex. Um, as for T, I, I, again, I'm... I don't understand the TJ Yeldon hype. He's in Jacksonville. When, when since Maurice Jones drew, has a Jacksonville running back ever thrived? The answer is never. Okay, the, the, the answer is never. It hasn't happened. There hasn't been a good back there since Jones drew. I don't know how many they've had since him. What, like five? Uh, the, 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 the Toby Gerhardt experiment failed. The, the Storm Johnson experiment failed. The Denard Robinson experiment mainly failed. Maybe a few breakouts, but nothing other than that. Bottom line is there hasn't been a good Jacksonville running back since Jones Drew, and I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not thrilled with him. In the Miami defense, of course, you're going to try to run T.J. Yeldon against Adama Kinsu. Good luck with that. Um, Anquan Bolden, Joseph Randall, Sean McCoy, Alshon Jeffrey, Chris Johnson. Um, I would say probably, again, out of that bunch... Um, I'm starting probably LaShawn McCoy for sure. I like McCoy the most out of that bunch, I'm going to say. Um, looked impressive against the Colts. Going to do well against Wingo, so I like McCoy the most out of that bunch. Then I'll probably say Joseph Randall second out of that group. Um, Randall, to me, is more of a running back two. Bolden, more of a wide receiver three going up against Pittsburgh. Jeffrey, more of a wide receiver two or three against Arizona. And Chris Johnson, I think, is more to me. It's nice seeing a starting role here in Arizona with Ellington out. I would say more of an RB2 or a definite, but a definite sneaky flex play, though, going up against Chicago. Uh, Jonathan Stewart, Keenan Allen, D'Angelo Williams, Vincent Jackson, Calvin Johnson. Um, to me, again, must-start options are Keenan Allen, um, 
and Cal and Calvin Johnson. I have both of them in my league. I'm starting both of them this week. They're my they're my top re receiver guys. Um, again, not too worried about Calvin Johnson for the foreseeable future. Stafford will find him a way to get the ball more. Keenan Allen's breakout week for Keenan Allen last week. Um, so even though again the tough matchup against Cincinnati, can't afford to sit him. So uh, I'm starting him this week. Um, so those two are must start guys. Um, Vincent Jackson again. The Bucks offense again. I'm concerned about un until there's really improvement shown across the board. I know week one you kind of take with a grain of salt, but the fact that it just wasn't a great week for the Tampa Bay offense. A little worried about Vincent Jackson. I would treat him more of as a wide receiver three this week. Um, and between Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams, I I will like Jonathan Stewart more. I, I even though the Houston matchup is also tough, I think D'Angelo Williams matchup against San Francisco is a lot tougher. So I will say Jonathan Stewart, you can safely probably use as an RB2. D'Angelo Williams, more of an RB3 or a flex play. Uh, Justin Forsett, Bishop Sankey, Gio Bernard, John Brown, Jordan Matthews. I'm surprised, again, Justin Forsett is, is low on this list. I would put Justin Forsett above D'Angelo Williams. I'd put him above Jonathan Stewart. I'd put him above Chris Johnson. I'd put him above Joseph Randall. I put him above T.J. Yeldon. Maybe Rashad Jennings it stops. So, so I put him above Rashad McCoy too. So I put him probably right below Rashad Jennings. I'm surprised Justin Forsett is is low on this list. Great matchup against Oakland. RB one for sure. I'm surprised he's that low on the list. Get Justin Forsett and your reliable Ravens in your lineups this week. Um, Jordan Matthews is a must start. Yes, Jordan Matthews again. Your Eagles, your Cowboys that you know you normally rely on. Um, start them this week as well. So Forsett is much higher up the list. Matthews is higher up. John Brown of Arizona. I'm still trying to figure out what his role is. Uh, you know, because Carson Palmer likes to start the ball around. Now John Brown did have a touchdown last week, which was nice. But you know, you still got Larry Fitzgerald there, who's reliable. You still got Michael Floyd, who's reliable. So I'm um, kind of hard to see what his role is going to be, but going against Chicago, you can probably get with John Brown as wide receiver three. I think I think that's that's a viable spot for him. Now again, a, a tough one here between Bishop Sankey and Gio Bernard. Um, Gio Bernard is is at this point more of a flex play. We know that Jeremy Hill is now the main back in Cincinnati, so Gio now is more reserved for that RB three or flex role. But what do we make now of Bishop Sankey? I mean, he was such a disappointment in Tennessee overall, you know, his, his rookie year in those first, you know, in that stretch. He was just terrible. We were expecting big things from the get-go. It didn't happen. And now all of a sudden he goes off for two touchdowns against Tampa Bay. Well, that's all well and good. The matchup is good against Cleveland this week. But, you know, what do you make of him going forward? I, I'd say for now... If you have no better options at running back, maybe you can get away with Sankey as an RB2 or 3. I, I, I'd say for now, that's probably a comfortable position to put him in. Not an elite starting option, but certainly one you can get away with if you have no better options. So the matchups aren't going to be this juicy every single week, but the schedule is favorable for Tennessee in the early going. So just something to consider um, with, with Bishop Sankey. Definitely one to watch going forward. Um... Then the next group here, um, at this point, we're kind of just kind of going to dig into some uh, sleeper names uh, off this list um, of guys that I think should should start this week. Um, let's see. Emmanuel Sanders of Denver. I think you can start him against Kansas City. Um Jimmy Graham, yes. Tyler, Tyler Eifert. I got Tyler Eifert off waivers. The tight end of Cincinnati, he's a big name. I think you can start him going forward. He's going to be getting involved in that Cincinnati offense. He's basically now the number two weapon behind A.J. Green. So, yes, you can start him. I mentioned James Jones. I think you can get away with Percy Harvin as, as a number three wide receiver this week going up against New England. I mentioned Marcus Colston and Brandon Coleman. Start your Saints. Um, Travis Kelsey, yep. I think he's a must-start tonight against Denver. Jarvis Landry. Broke out in a big way for Miami this week. Had a touchdown. I'd say, again, more of a wide receiver, two or three against Jacksonville. You want to see what the Miami offense can do, if they can bounce back. But I think he's definitely usable. Michael Floyd, again, more of a wide receiver, two or three. But I think you can use him. Not thrilled with Doug Martin. 
Um, Roddy White, as long as he's healthy, good wide receiver too. Um, after that, we're really digging deep here. Now, LeGarrett Blunt does come back from suspension this week for New England at running back. LeGarrett Blunt. Um, so I, I think he's he's definitely usable. Although the matchup is tough for, for against Buffalo, usable is more of an RB two or three if you have no better options. So he's definitely someone that you can use. I mentioned David Johnson as a flex. You can use him. Um, and probably another popular waiver name, Stevie Johnson of San Diego. Who is benefiting the most from Antonio Gates' absence? Well, definitely Keenan Allen, but he's reliable anyway. But how about Stevie Johnson, the wide receiver from the Chargers? Um, I, I think certainly um, is is potentially usable as wide receiver three against Cincinnati this week. I, I, even though the matchup is a little tough, I think certainly you have no better options, and you pick them up off of waivers. Stevie Johnson, somebody you can plug in there as wide receiver three. Brandon Marshall, I think he's usable this week as wide receiver two. Love the matchup. Um... Then after that, Jason Witten, yes, is usable this week. Larry Fitzgerald, I yes, I agree with. Steve Smith of the Ravens, start him this week. Um, other than that, I'm not seeing any other, other big names jumping out. Maybe you can get away with Kendall Wright of Tennessee as wide receiver three. Um, Marty Cooper, no. I wouldn't trust Jeremy Mackle this week. More wide receiver four. Um... Yeah, other than that, we're really kind of digging into deep sleepers on this list. Darren Sproles, I think you can still use as a flex. Safarian Jenkins, uh, 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 you know, more of a tight end too still, but you have to appreciate the breakout performance last week. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm not seeing any names on the list now that are really jumping out at me as like must-start options. Um or even players you can really, that are usable. At this point, we're really, 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 really digging deep. So, yeah. So after that, no one else really worth, uh, worth, <coughs> worth using. All right. So that is it. That wraps up for the week two. Hopefully, uh, I, uh, I piloted a lot of matchups to take advantage of. Um, Saints. Start your Saints against Tampa Bay. Start your Jets guys against the Colts. Get Chris Ivory in your lineups. Start the Seahawks and Packers. I think, again, this is going to be a great matchup. Start your Eagles and Cowboys. I think that's going to be a fun point-filled matchup as well. Um, and tonight, again, don't worry about C.J. Anderson. Start him with confidence. Uh, the Denver receivers at least start with confidence. Jamal Charles, Travis Kelsey, those are the must-starts in that game tonight. Uh, a lot to be taken advantage of this week and a lot of intriguing situations. As always, I appreciate you guys for your support, your views, everything. Um, thank you so much for that. If you have any line of dilemmas that I did not address in this video, please, as always, feel free to leave a comment in the box below. Uh, I checked my Gmail leading up to the, the, the games throughout the week. So please, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Feel free to do so. Uh, and we need to get out there and get a win in week two, especially my team after the rough week one. I hope, again, you're not in that situation, but hopefully you can go out there and get a win this week. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in so much. Good luck in week two. Go out there and get a win, and we'll see you guys again next week when we recap everything that happened in week two and get you ready for week three in the week three preview edition for your team, your league, your game, your home the Fantasy Football Stock Report. Thanks, guys, and good luck.